everybody, it's Ginger. I'm just continuing on in our gardening series from North Fork 53. Today I want to show you what to do with your trays once they are sprouted. And um, I got a good variety of trays here in front of me to show you different problems that you can have and how to deal with them. So, um, the first thing that you might have had happen to you when you sprouted is that maybe you missed the part where they uh, sprouted and they were under in the tray in the dark for a little bit longer. That's what happened here. This is charred, and it came up before I, rec I realized it overnight. It sprouted very quickly, and um, it got really leggy. So what they call this is it was searching for light. It, so it shot up, and it had this really long stem looking for light. And this isn't an ideal thing to have happen because what you have now as the plant develops its true leaves, it gets really heavy, so it falls over, and the stem can't support the plant. So... That's not ideal. <laughs> if you have the ability to go into this tray and, and thin it out and try to select for the stronger looking plants, this is now the time you can do that. So you can see these trays are outdoors now. I have a hoop house, so I have this ability to bring them outside. They're still under a little bit of cover and protection, but just be aware that when your plants are this age and they've developed these sets of true leaves on them now, the light from the sun is about a gazillion times that's scientifically true. No, a gazillion times stronger than your fluorescent bank, right? So this is the kind of light that plants need. Plants need at least six to eight hours of direct sunlight to really live and thrive. Most plants do. So get them outside as soon as you can. And if it's too cold, then bring them back in at night um, and keep them warm and then put them out during the day under the sun. And you're going to give them the life force they need to really grow strong so they won't get all leggy. Um, and you know, you're going to give yourself some space in your box where you have your lights because you're going to have more plants coming. So you can't have everything just hanging out in there forever, right? That's the reason I brought these out. These, I don't have room for these anymore. I've got other plants coming in. So these are cold, hardy plants. So if you have things like uh, spinach and kale and chard or flowers like marigolds, this is um, indigo here. This is a dye plant. It's very hardy. So it doesn't need to be babied anymore. It doesn't need to be in like a 75 degree room it can it's happier outside um, the only thing you want to be sure of when you get them out here is you don't overwater them because now the soil is cold and it's not getting warmed up by your lights or your indoor space so if you overwater them and they sit in cold soil their roots can rot so if you bring them outside bring them outside in the morning water them if they need it only if they need it water them in the morning and then let them dry out in, in the sunshine during the day and then put them away at night or you can let them sit out overnight but now they've had a day of sun they've dried out a little bit and really just watch your watering so what I do is I actually lift the trays up and I feel how heavy they are so this one's a little heavy uh, but I watered it this morning so hopefully by the end of the day we've had sun today um, it'll be dried out a little bit um, so just be careful with your watering and water them in the morning if you're gonna water them at all but don't water them if they don't need it okay so Let's look at a couple ways to thin a tray. This is, uh, this is um, licorice mint. This is anise hyssop. I grow this for our tea farm, and I had a lot of seed. The seed is extremely small. I saved the seed from the farm, so I had a ton of it. So I seeded it pretty heavy, too heavy apparently, because now I have all of these in here. And when I used to train my interns on how to thin plants, I would say, you know, remember that TV show, The Highlander? There can be only one. <laughs> that is true for most seed trays. There can be only one. You want one plant per, per cell here because this plant needs space. And in nature, it does kind of look like this. They, they dump a lot of seed at once. Nature is very abundant. A bunch of things will come up and nature will, will designs this to be abundant and then they fight it, fight it out for the survival of the fittest. So you're kind of doing the same thing. This gives you a chance to select for the best one, looking one in the group, right? So you're looking, you're picking, you're selecting for strong seed. This is actually a way to do a little bit of seed saving, selecting now. If you're going to save seed, picking the best looking plant now is a great way to get yourself better seed later. So this is kind of a, so if I look at this little cell right here, okay, you've got obviously some heavy contenders that came up first. This is a, a much bigger plant than say this little guy down here. They were seeded at the exact same time. So I know that this is a more vigorous plant and I want that one. I also want it because it's right in the middle of the cell and it's going to have a nice space to grow evenly. If I pick one way at the side, which like over here you might see, this is the better one, right? And, but unfortunately, it's growing on the side and not in the middle. But I would still pick that one. 
So this is how I'm going to thin it. You look at the good plant. I say, I want this one right here. This one looks great. And I don't want, oh, there can only be one, right? Like the Highlander motto. So we pick around it gently with our hands until there's only one. One and it's hyssop. This is a big plant. It's going to turn into a very large plant. It's going to be 72 of them all together in a 100-foot row. It's going to give me a ton of anise okay? So you go through this tray, and you do that. And now I want to show you another thing. The cell right next to it has all these little tiny babies. It's kind of hard to differentiate which one's the winner there. So just let it grow. You don't have to do it right now. These are very small. As they get bigger, one will become a clear winner, usually. If they're not, then just pick one in the middle. Um, but this is the way I did. So you're going to go through your whole tray, and you're going to thin them to one. It can be only one. Let's look at the kale. Let's actually, as we're, as we're scrolling down here, let's stop with the chard. So the chard, all these floppy stems, which is unfortunate. Um, this was also seed saved from the farm. So I don't like these floppy stems. You know, I'm going to, they're not going to grow well. I can up pot them and correct for some of that. But I'm going to, even though they're big, this is an instance where I might actually pull out some of the bigger ones and save some of the ones that came up later because they look a little more sturdy. You know, they're just, they're holding themselves upright. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select for the ones that are actually standing themselves up the best. And you're just going to do your best on a tray like this. Um, like this one is standing up better than this one, even though this is a bigger one, you know. So maybe I'll pull that one and let that one go. And if you pull them, be careful that you don't uproot the other ones. So give this one a little, a little love pat back down. And also it helps with these ones if you could rub your hands over the, the stems like you're the wind. If you have a fan or if they're in a breezy place, nature will do this for you. But this makes the stem stronger. Give them a little pet. You can do this when they're under lights, too. Just run your hands across them. And what you're doing is you're telling the plant there's movement, there's stress, and it's going to make the stem stronger, hardier, and more stable. So let's come down here. Now, indigo is an, is an interesting plant because it, we're not going to thin it. There are some plants that actually like to be grown in groups, and they do well, they do well planted as a group. Um, so indigo is one of those plants. Onions are another plant like that. The um, bulbing onions can be planted. They're very, the seed is really small. They're really, they kind of look like this. This is an onion, but they kind of look like this. And it's really hard to do one onion at a time. So if you do bulbing onions, you can plant them in groups and let them grow in trees. And so finally, we're going to look at the kale. This was kale seed that was very old, so I used way too much of it. And honestly, it all came up. So that's great. So again, I wanted to show you with kale. The brassica leaves are this really typical heart shape. This is the cotyledon. This is the seed leaf. And then the kale now is putting up its true leaf, which you can start to see it actually looks like a kale leaf, a little tiny one. So look how many kales are in this. And some of them are kind of floppy. I like this one. Look, this is like a sturdy. Kale, yeah. You're going to want to push down the soil a little bit when you're doing this because I'm taking out a lot now. So I might disturb the roots of the one I want. So there you go. That's a kale thin. Now that kale is going to be much, much happier. It might seem mean to pull all its relatives out, but this is the way nature works. The strongest survive. There can be only one. And that kale plant will be much, much happier for what I just did. If you try to do it all, it's not going to work. So thin them. And then the last thing I'm going to do is fertilize them. Uh, this is a good time to fertilize your plants after you've thinned because they've been stressed out a little bit. You've been removing them. So fish fertilizer is a good thing to feed baby plants with. It's readily available. You see that the nitrogen level is 5, 1, 1. So it has very little low potassium and phosphorus, but it's got a high nitrogen. So this is for growth. I'm going to put one tablespoon of this foul-smelling goo into my two-gallon thing of water here. You don't need a lot because it's these are really small plants. They, I mean, But you do need to feed them now. Remember I told you after they get their set of true leaves, feed them. So you stir this up and then just water them gently. Uh, you can use fish fertilizer. You can use other gentle fertilizers, but this is my favorite. So, all right, that's your next step on your seed adventure. You've got them up in the trays, thin them, get them outdoors, give them some real light during the day. And if you have a covered space, leave them outdoors. If you don't, put them back in at night and then give them a little fertilizer in the morning when you're watering them. And uh, hopefully everything just keeps growing strong. <laughs> if you want to have some private garden coaching with me, you can email me at info at northfork53.com. And uh, I do private garden coaching with people. If you really want me to look at your space, you can take photos of it, send it to me, send me lots of questions, and I'll write up a garden plan for you. Um, that does cost money, but I'm also doing this whole series of videos for free. So we're going to do as much as we can on video uh, to help you guys out.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.